Hi everyone, what's up? So in this video, I'm going to show you how you can set up and use Databricks Community Edition to practice Spark Code and SQL Query. These are all the things that I'm going to cover. So first I'm going to discuss what are the features of Databricks Community Edition, then how to create cluster in Databricks, how to execute Spark and SQL in Databricks and finally how you can create a temporary and a permanent table in it. If you're new to my channel, here's a quick note. I post new videos every week in which I discuss data engineer interview experiences along with interview questions and answers. So please hit the subscribe button. It will help my channel grow and keep me motivated to keep making such informative videos and also it's absolutely free. Databricks Community Edition is a free to use tool. It is mainly for learning and practicing Spark, SQL or Python code. You can also write R in it. You have access to a 15 GB cluster. It consists of the latest version of Spark. You can also change the Spark version to older ones. Once cluster is created, you can create a new notebook or you can also upload any IPython notebook to it. All the uploaded and created notebooks are available in the workspace. The cluster terminates after 30 minutes of inactivity. You cannot recreate the same cluster again once it is terminated. You also get a free storage called DBFS which is Databricks file system. Here you can upload CSE files to create table. So these are the common features that are available in the free version. Um, but if you are working on a complex project then you can always upgrade it. But for practicing this version is enough. Now let's see how you can create a cluster in Databricks. So here we are on the Databricks community website. So you can explore this website. I have given the link to this in the description. So first you, what you have to do is create an account. You can click on this button to either login or register. The account creation process is fairly simple. So once you have created your account, you will be redirected to a page that looks like this. So your name's initial or your email ID's initial would be here. Here you can find your account settings. And this is a menu which we are interested at right now. So you can just open this menu clicking on the button on the bottom. So let's go through it one by one. Workspace is basically a place where all your files, all your notebooks are. Then recent is all the files that you have worked on recently. Search bar is like any other search bar. You can just search your notebooks in the workspace. Catalog is a, is a tool which helps us creating a table. Uh, we will look into it more detail a bit later. Workflows does not come with Databricks Community Edition. So it is basically used to schedule your scripts so they run every day or in a periodical order but it is not with the free version. So compute is a place which we are going to discuss in this part. So in order to create our cluster you have to come to the compute section. So this is the name of the cluster that I created earlier and uh, let's create a cluster now. So you can see this button here create compute click on this you will be redirected to this page. You can give any name to this cluster so I'm just giving give it cc003 and in the next uh, part you can select what spark version you want so i've never really explored the ml part because i'm more focused on the data engineering part so spark is only required for it um, and here you can see it comes with spark 3.5 which is the latest version so usually i pick the 14.2 and so far i have not faced any problem in case you want to add any configuration so you can just click on this spark button and add it here once you are comfortable with all the settings then just create click on uh, create compute so it takes like four to five minutes to create your uh, cluster. So once it is created, we will be able to write our code in a notebook. So it will be show you quickly meanwhile while it is connecting. So you can just click on this new button and create a notebook or what you can do is you can go to workspace. You can create a folder here. Let's call it test. So the test folder is created and inside our, our email ID or our user folder. So here also you can create a notebook and the notebook will come with untitled name. You can change it to anything. I'll call it test again. And once your cluster, which is uh, which we uh, created in the compute section uh, starts, then you can see it will pop up here with green light. So let it connect. So I'll come back after it has connected. So I'm back on the Databricks notebook and as you can see, my cluster CC03 has started and I've attached it here. If you don't see a cluster attached here in your notebook, click on this button and in the recent resources, you will find your name. 
um, so whatever cluster you've created have will have a green uh, circle in front of it just click on it and it will get attached so once your cluster has been started and it is attached you can run the code in your commands um, so in each command you can write the code either in python uh, sql scala or r you can even change the entire uh, uh, particular programming language for this notebook by clicking on this button in the top so i can switch it to sql scala or r there also there's also another icon you can see there which is called uh, markdown so on uh, clicking on markdown you can add any text to a particular command let's say this so i've written sarthak so it is just a title before my code command let me run this command um, so this is a basic program where i have a list of one two and three elements and i'm adding them and you can run the command two ways you can either click on this button or you can do a shift plus enter and similar to python i've also written a spark code as you can see here is the data defined i also defined a schema and i'm creating a data frame and i'll press shift and enter and the result will be generated here so other than this let me show you what comes in the top bar this menu section in the file if you go to the import button so you can import any notebook and the accepted formats are here then there is also an export export button where you can download this particular notebook you can download it in dbc archive source file ipython notebook or html i usually download it with the source file then um, other than this there is also an option to clone a notebook so this helps with, with like if you have a notebook in your um, workspace and you want to reuse it or shift to any other place then you can use this clone button just you have to give a name and uh, click on the browse button and select the directory to which you want to clone the this particular notebook other than this if you want to change how this workspace or how this databricks notebook section looks just click on the view button go to workspace theme so right now the light theme is selected you can switch it to dark theme so yeah you can explore all the buttons in this uh, menu section and you'll get a good idea on how this works so databricks comes with dbfs which is databricks file system it is a free storage that comes with the community edition so click on the file button in the menu and go to the last option which is upload data to dbfs once you click on it you can upload any csv file you want to create a table out of you can also select the directory in which you have to place this file so and not just csv you can upload any type of file here there are two default folders which is shared uploads and tables and you can place your file in any of the folders so other than this in order to navigate the dbfs through code you have to use dbutils.fs and there are some commands that come with it so there are only few commands um, ls is used to list all the files so file store is your parent or root directory if i run this command it will show, show me all the folders or files present in file store so as you can see shared uploads and tables are the directories present here you can also create a new folder inside it you can you have to use dbutils.fs.mkdirs and give the path in which you want to create the folder along with the folder name so now once i click it um, you see true is returned that means sarthak folder has been created let me show you so again i'm uh, listing all the files or folders in file store and along with shared folders and tables now sarthak folder is also been created now let me upload a csv file to the uh, dbfs so here i want to upload it to the tables directory so i'll just select it here and click on this and select whatever file i want to upload so once it is uploaded it will show like this and click on next and i'll just copy this uh, the data frame code we'll look into a bit later i'll just copy the dbfs location for this file so click on done um, once it is uploaded what you can do is you can check if the file is present or not first thing i'll do is i will list all the files in the tables folder so let me run this command as you can see we have all these files here so the above three are the ones which i uploaded earlier and this sales data.csv is the one which i uploaded just now so if you want to remove a particular file so you can use dbutils.fs.rm rm is short for removing a file and you have to give true value here so once i run it if you get true that means the file is deleted now again if i list all the files now as you can see the sales data.csv is gone 
so okay now let's move on to how you can use um, data frame code and like create a data frame out of these files so once you've uploaded your csv to uh, the dbfs and not just csv file but any file maybe parquet or some file so you can create a data frame out of it you have to define the location of the file starting from file store which is our root directory then whatever directory you placed your file in or you can copy uh, the file location once you have uploaded the particular csv or particular data file so you have to give a location here and you just have to write the same uh, common uh, spark.read code in order to read the file so let me run this command so once it is completed you will see the data frame popping up so here is the resultant data frame and it consists of all the content that was present in uh, my sales data.csv now once you have created a data frame you can also convert it into a temporary view to write your sql queries so i've used this uh, very common spark code which is df.create or replace temp view this creates a temporary view which is accessible in this notebook i won't be able to query this v underscore sales view in any other notebook so let me create it so once it is created i can just switch to sql in this command or i can write percentage sql to write any sql query so most of the sql queries or most of the sql in spark, spark sql is similar to any other like mysql or uh, sql server so you can write those queries here it is very good for practice purpose because you don't have to make an effort in creating a table you can just create an excel or a csv file and upload to dbfs and just create a data frame to practice your spark code and create a temporary view to practice your sql queries so just as you can read a file from file store you can also write to the file store so how you you have to write so in the previous data frame what i'm what i'm doing now i am doing a uh, simple transformations like you can see i'm taking out the year from this order date i am changing the region to a uppercase then i'm concatting the manager and sales column to create a new column called manager underscore sales then i'm calculating the amount by multiplying units and unit price and let me run this command so as you can see this is my new data frame and now i what i want is i want to write this data frame into the file store so i just i've just used the common spark dot write command basically df dot write command um, and i'm saving it as a parquet file and i am saving it inside the sarthak folder which i created earlier so let me run this so once this write command is completed we will be able to see the file created there so let me just list the files in the sarthak folder so as you can see once i have listed all the files in this sales folder which is inside sarthak all the files which were created as part of the write operation can be seen here and if i'm if you notice then the one which has size equal to this 1870 in your case the size might be a little different is our parquet file which we can again read and how to read it you can use the same command which i showed you above um, basically here now let's move on to how you can create a permanent table and you can use it across all the notebooks so there are two ways using which you can create tables that can be accessed across all notebooks in databricks so first approach is you can use the save as table command which is dffinal.write.mode and you can give overwrite or append then dot format you can define parquet csv whatever you want then dot save as table and the table name so I'm calling this table as sales data final. So I had run this command earlier which created this table and when I query this you can see the data has been populated. Now the second method is go to the menu in the left if it is collapsed then in the bottom click on this button and it will stick to the screen. Click on catalog and you can see the default database is called default and because I created this table it will show in the tables list. So if you want to create a table using the UI present in Databricks, you have to go in this option then click on the create table button and this page will be opened. So here you can do two things. Either you can use a CSV or any data set which is present in the file store tables directory or you can upload again. So I'm uploading this data again. So now you, I again have two options. Either I can go and create a, a notebook in which I can create a table or i can use the ui so let me show you the ui method so once i click on create table with ui you can see the cluster section pop, uh, popped up and here is my cluster that i had created now let me click on preview table and 
go down so first um, text is my table's name so i can call it uh, sales data underscore one then the default database will be selected your file type will be selected and as you can see the um, headers or the column names are a little messed up so what you can do is you can tick the first row is header so now the first row will be considered as your column names so this is my entire data and you can even change the uh, file or data type of each column example i want to change this units data type to integer so i can do that let me do it for the last column as well so this one also i'll change to integer so once i'm satisfied with all this i can just click on the create table and this will redirect me to a page where it will show that my table has been created so let's just wait for one minute and yes so you can see the default dot sales underscore data underscore one table has been created here is my schema and here is my final data so once it is done i can again query this table so let me try it so i have to write percentage sql then select star from and default database is always selected so always like used so you don't have to mention that you can just click on the or write the uh, table's name so let me run it and so you can see this is the csv that i uploaded just now and it is the entire data so using this you can easily practice your sql you can practice questions from lead code and solve it here and it is very useful because you don't have to create a new environment you don't have to download any software you can just go to this website and do your practice and follow your learning so that's it for this video if you found it useful then please share it with your friends and like the video in the coming few weeks i will i have planned many such videos on pyspark and sql interview questions so stay tuned for them and if you have not subscribed then please press the subscribe button and i'll see you next time